Welcome back everyone. Hope your Sunday is going good. Of course, today is race day. Two big races, Indianapolis 500 here in central Indiana, and of course down in Concord, North Carolina, the Coca-Cola 600, or whatever it is they call it now. They've changed name on it so many times over the years, I just really haven't paid attention. Like we said yesterday, we're going to look at some IndyCar cards today. Um, thought that'd be kind of cool. i got a couple of sets here. I've kind of thumbed through these sets, and they're not complete, so I think I've pulled singles out to have autographed in years past at the uh, Legends Day at Indianapolis. This is 1992 All-World Racing. Many of you have probably seen these cards before. They come in English and French. So we're just going to look at a few drivers on here. See Michael Andretti. What I like about these cards, it does give you the 1991 race results, and there you see Michael was very dominant in 1991. Not, not a lot of non-podium finishes there. Kind of started the year off a little bit rough and came back strong there with uh, three consecutive victories at Vancouver, Mid-Ohio, and Elkhart Lake. If you look at the schedule, you have Phoenix, Indy, Milwaukee, and then you go down here to Michigan. So there was only four ovals in 1991. So it's kind of crazy to think about. So there's going to be all sorts of uh, unfamiliar names to many of you here, and some familiar names as well. Gary Bettenhausen, Willie T. Ribs. I recommend you all watch uh, Uppity, the documentary about him that's on Netflix. Very, very good. Scott Pruitt. Of course, Scott ran some NASCAR races. There's Scott Goodyear, finished second in 1992 to Alan Sir Jr. Eddie Achiever, who uh, raced Formula One before coming to Indy Cars. Phil Kruger had a nasty crash at Indiana or in Michigan in 1984. There's 1990 winner Ari Leyendijk. Michael Greenfield kind of bounced around a little bit. Stan Fox. Stan ran a few Indy 500s, but his career ended in a crash on lap one uh, in the 1995 Indy 500. Very, very serious head and leg injuries. Pretty gruesome crash to go back and watch when you consider it but did have some decent runs in the 500. Also ran a few NASCAR races in 1992. There's John Andretti. Of course, he passed away January of 2020. Okay, he did have one IndyCar win, uh, driving for Hall VDS down in Australia, Guido Daco. Kevin Kogan, 1986 Indy 500 runner-up. Danny Sullivan, who won in 1985, spin and win. Mark Dismore overcame some severe back injuries in the early 90s. It may have been 91. Um, yeah, 1991, he had horrible, horrible crash. Emerson Fittipaldi, who won in 89 and 93, I believe. Didier Taze, Jeff Brabham, former IMSA GTP champion. I believe he was a four-time champion there. Buddy Lazier, who would win the 596. There's 1969 winner Mario Andretti. Dale Coyne who's become a pretty decent car owner, Roberto Guerrero, the 1992 pole sitter, and in Roberto's first four Indianapolis 500s, 84 through 87, he finished second, third, fourth, and second. So he had a pretty good run going. Dominic Dobson, I believe Dominic would uh, go on to run a couple truck series races in the late 90s, early 2000s. There's four-time Indy 500 winner, Alan Sir Jr. I believe his wins were 70, 71, 78, and 87, but that's just off the top of my head, Tony Bettenhausen, Scott Brayton, who passed away in 1996 in a practice crash at Indy, Gordon Johncock, who won the race in 73 and 82, Taro Palmoroth, Dennis Vitolo. If you go back and watch the 1994 Indy 500, Dennis's car ended up basically on top of Nigel Mansell's car under caution. Kind of a weird accident. Uh, Bernard Jourdain. Ted Prappas, so we're getting into a few guys, Jeff Wood, that didn't have a lot of success. There's four-time winner Rick Mears, I believe his wins were, what were they, Se <clears throat> excuse me, 79, 84, 88, and 91. Jim Crawford, who was a Buick stalwart for a long time, had a lot of success with the Buick engine. He never uh, won, but he was always a fast qualifier. I believe he finished sixth in 1988. Randy Lewis, we've seen him earlier, as well as Buddy Lazier, Michael Andretti, we've seen him earlier. There's John with his first career win. We talked about it, his only career Indy car win, actually. And there's the four Andrettis, Jeff and Michael, who are Mario's uh, sons, and John, who was Mario's twin brother, Aldo's only, uh, his son. 
Of course, Aldo recently passed away. There's the Andretti trifecta. They got the uh, podium for a second, third in Milwaukee in 91. Storm and Norman's General Norman Schwarzkopf. And many of you will remember him from the uh, Operation Desert Storm back in uh, 1991. Got some in-memory cards. Rich Vogler, who was uh, killed in 1990 in a sprint car race at Salem, Indiana. He was supposed to make his NASCAR debut the next day. Al LaQuasto, I don't know a lot about Al, but I do know he ran a few NASCAR races in the mid-80s. Got a checklist. Roger Ward, all-time great. Louis Meyer, Johnny Parsons, Troy Rutman. Troy was the youngest winner of the 500 back in 1952. Eddie Sachs. Eddie was a popular driver, but tragically killed in 1964 in that fiery crash with Dave McDonald. There's Johnny Boyd, Lloyd Ruby, Bill Vukovic Jr., whose dad was a two-time winner in 53 and 54, but was tragically killed on the backstretch in 1955. And Bill's son, Billy Vukovic III, was killed in a super-modified race. I believe it was an Ascot or Manzanita Raceway somewhere in California. I want to say it was 1990, but it was somewhere in that era. So tragic, tragic, uh, you know, set of circumstances there for Bill Jr. There's Ziggy, George Schneider. Driving, he was a longtime driver for AJ at the track. Gene Hartley, don't know much about him. Howdy Holmes made several Indy 500 starts, and he was an executive for the Jiffy Mixes Corporation. Look that one up. Pretty interesting stuff there. Lee Koonsman, Larry Rice, who spent many years on the dirt tracks and sprint car tracks and worked for ESPN for a number of years. We've seen Mario Andretti, we've seen Gordon Johncock, we've seen Scotty Goodyear and Jim Crawford, so we're starting to get some repeats. There's a lone star, J.R. Johnny Rutherford. I think he was a three-time winner. I don't know, but I do remember he won in 1980, and Tim Richmond, who ran out of gas on the last lap, hitched a ride on his side pod. I do know he won in 1980, but I can't remember the other ones. We talked about Danny Sullivan earlier. There's Mike Landretti, who is 4 all his starts at Indy. Fittipaldi, Steve Chassie, another checklist. I believe that's Ari Leyendijk. Alan Sir Jr., who won in... Oh, what was it? 92 and 94 for two different teams. Roberto Guerrero, Cheever, Pruitt. There's Kruger again, Rick Mears, Al Unser Sr., Tony Bettenhausen, Dominic Dobson. So we got a lot of repeat drivers, not repeat cards. Randy Lewis. So I like that, that it does have some different... Uh, cards of this duplicate, I don't want to say duplicate cards, but you're repeating drivers, and but they're not the same card. Maybe it's a, one is a career card, and one is a season review card of 1991. So I really can appreciate that. I like the fact that it does have their finishes on the back. And back before, back before uh, internet and Google and racing reference, dot .info and all these other websites, these were my go-tos for a lot of statistics and a lot of information so, this is another all-world racing set. We're not going to go into detail as much on this one. So, we'll just kind of slide through this one and let you guys look. In memory of uh, Bill Vukovic III, so let's uh, see what it says about him. Um, killed while practicing a CRA in Bakersfield. Okay, I knew it was in California, but I couldn't remember. But it was in 1990. And there's Johnny Andretti, one of his earlier cards. So I think this is the 91 set. There's the gas man, Tom Sneeve. Of course, he is the 1983 Indy 500 winner. Bobby Rahal, we didn't see him in the last box. He's the 1986 winner. And Bobby's car owner in the 1986 500, Jim Truman, is the grandfather of NASCAR Xfinity Series driver Austin Sendrick. So I think that was kind of a, a unique connection there. There's Ari Leindyke, the 1990 winner. We mentioned that a bit ago. Jan Bikas, he worked for ESPN for a while. There's Emerson. Emerson, we did not mention, is, I believe, the 1973 Formula One champion. And he came over to IndyCars in 1985 as a rookie. I thought that was pretty intense. There's uh, Poncho Carter and his father, Dwayne. So it's Dwayne Sr., Dwayne Jr. But Poncho's the 1985 Indy 500 pole sitter. Did win the Michigan 500 in 1981 over Rick Mears. 
Getting in some other drivers. There's Rick Mears. We just spoke of him. Gary Bettenhausen. Raul Boisel. Raul uh, was a journeyman driver, but just never had the success. I think he had the talent. He just uh, had a lot of bad luck. Kevin Kogan. Wally Dollenbach Jr. ran a few IndyCar races. Didn't have much success, but was successful in the SCCA Trans Am Series. Did go up to NASCAR and ran several years in NASCAR's Cup Series. For Jack Roush, Richard Petty, uh, who else did he race for? He drove a year for Hendrick, and then he drove the number 75 car after Butch Mock sold it to a guy named Darwin Orrent, I believe was the guy's name. And that was the last year that that team was in existence, before they just kind of ran out of money. Have a lot of race review cards, and there's Guido Daco. Steve Chassie, we've seen him earlier. Phil Kruger, Bernard Jourdain, hadn't seen him yet. There's Lone Star JR. Ludwig Heimrath Jr. I believe he may have ran as a teammate to Scott Goodyear because they've had the same sponsorship. He didn't have much of a career. Scott Atchison had a pretty quiet career, as did John Jones. Davy Jones, he was an IMSA driver as well. He ran for Rookie of the Year in the Cup Series in 1995 for Jasper Motorsports, but didn't uh, didn't fare very well and was released about midway. Steve Celine, I know absolutely nothing about. There's Gordon Johncock once again. Dale Coyne, we've seen him. Billy Vukovic III, of course, we mentioned his tragic passing. There's Emerson Fittipaldi, and the story behind this... I read this in the one of the Indy 500 programs. They wanted to stack the money on the car uh, because the winner, that was the first year, 1989, that the winner got a million dollars. I'm sorry, that's not 1990. It's 89. It's a, I was thinking 1990. But when he won in 89, it was the first year the winner got a million dollar purse. So they got a million dollars in cash, put it on the car, and it did not look like a lot of money. So they went and got a lot more money. There's actually about $2.3 million on that car. It's in the 1990, the story's in the 1990 Indianapolis 500 program. So we have Michael Andretti once again, Danny Sullivan, in memory of Jim Herbeese. Herbeese, I probably mispronounced that, but he did win a NASCAR race in Atlanta back in the 60s. Memory of Sheldon Kinzer. Don't know much about Sheldon. Al Holbert. Uh, this guy was up there pretty close in talent to a Mark Donahue, I would think. Many IMSA starts, many titles, many wins. Ran a lot of NASCAR races in the late 70s, early 80s. Did pretty good on the road courses. Kind of struggled in Indy cars a little bit, but was killed in a plane crash in 1988. Uh, there's Sam Hanks. Dwayne Carter Sr., we mentioned him earlier, Poncho's dad. There's Gary and Tony Bettenhausen Jr.'s father, Tony Sr. There's Rick Mears, Unser and Ray Hall, and then a checklist. Then we have just race review cards, so we're just going to kind of zip through these because there's not really anything here that I truly remember watching. Not saying that I didn't watch it, but I just don't recall, and I don't have a lot of recall about this particular season. There's a 1980 PPG champion Johnny Rutherford, 81 and 82 cart champ Rick Mears, 83 and 85 champ Al Sr., 84 champ Mario, 88 champ uh, Sullivan, and 89 champ Emerson Fittipaldi. Like I said, I could tell when I was skimming through these the other day that I had picked some cards out because I was wanting to get some uh, autographs at Legends Day over... Uh, Probably 2019, 2018, 17, or thereabouts. So those have been picked through quite a bit. Got some other cards here that I thought were kind of cool that I pulled out. Uh, got a Lynn St. James high-tech card here I'm getting ready to put in front of the camera. So we got that one. Of course, she was Rookie of the Year in 1992. I believe today's race is going to be a lot like 1992 because the weather is going to be cold. There's Tom Sneva when he was driving for Team Menard. Who else do we have? Here's Wally Dollenbach Sr., don't remember seeing him in that set, so I might have to uh, check through there. There's Hiro Mashusta. I believe he was the first Japanese driver. We'll just kind of wait till I get to something else that we haven't seen yet. Um, we've seen all these guys. So we got these A&S cards from the early 80s. Alan Sir Sr. Looks like... Uh, 
I don't know, I thought that was Dr. Jerry Punch beside him, but it was not. And I really like these because it did give you the record in the 500 mile races and then the other races that they drove during whatever season that they were referring to. I know I got a few more ANS cards. Dennis Firestone, he had a handful of bad wrecks as well at the Speedway. Chet Phillip, he uh, briefly ran in NASCAR, made his debut in 85, and his last start in 87, ran for Rookie of the Year in 86. Al Unser Sr., we men mentioned him. There's a little Al. So we've got Unser's all over the place here. Parnelli Jones, I believe he was the 63 winner of the Indy 500. Also had success in a lot of road racing series. Bobby Rahal. Yeah, these are definitely sorted out from where uh, <laughs> I took them to Legends Day. Uh, who is that? Uh, Phil Kruger once again. I say, go on uh, YouTube here and look up 1984 Michigan 500. That race was just a brutal crash fest. Chip Ganassi, he was involved in a horrible crash that day with Al Unser Jr. on the backstretch. Can't remember to what extent he was injured. I know Al Unser Jr. broke his leg. Now, if you see this one, had a little, it, it was actually a game piece. And if, uh, these were distributed by Hardee's, and I, you would obviously want a free sausage and egg biscuit. And the back of it win with uh, WTHR and, and Hardy's. WTHR is our local NBC affiliate. It's a nice picture of Al Jr. getting a pit stop there, getting refueled. Roberto Guerrero mentioned him a little bit earlier. Buddy Lazier. Probably some duplicates here that we're going to run into. Scott Goodyear. I believe he became an analyst for ABC for a while. Eddie Cheever. Danny Sullivan. One final small stack here of some ANS cards, and we'll call it a day. This is Jacques Villeneuve 1. This is the uncle of the 1995 winner, Jacques Villeneuve, and the brother of former Formula 1 driver Gilles Villeneuve. Of course, Gilles is Jacques Villeneuve's father, the Indy, the <laughs> 95 Indy winner. There's Tom Carnegie. Of course, Tom passed away a number of years ago, the voice of the Speedway, and current voice of the Speedway, Bob Jenkins, is battling brain cancer so all of our best to bob jenkins in his recovery jan lammers george schneider mario andretti johnny rutherford so these are these cards are just loaded with legends jose lee garza i believe he was the first driver from mexico to make a start in the indy 500 back in the early 80s rick muskiewicz kind of an independent driver dominic dobson ian ashley Randy Lewis, Jim Crawford. So I like these obscure drivers. Roberto Guerrero, once again, the 84 co-rookie of the year. I believe uh, Michael Andretti was co-rookie of the year with him. There's Desiree Wilson. She attempted the 500 in the early 80s, but did not qualify. Pretty stout front row, Sullivan Mears and Michael Andretti. Dominic Dobson, once again, Pocono 500 winner, Mario Andretti. Johnny Rutherford won the Michigan 500. We have Jose Lee Garza again. Then Ed Pym, who was a teammate for a long time to Tom Sneva. He made a few cup starts in the late 80s. Dale Coyne. Who else do we have? Roberto Guerrero. Pete Halsmer, former road race ace, SCCA and so forth. There's uh, George Schneider driving for A.J. Foyt. Michael Rowe. Johnny Rutherford. Steve Chassie. John Paul Jr., who recently passed away, he's he is an interesting story. There's Scott Brayton. He was also a Buick stalwart for a long time. Kevin Cogan, Jim Crawford, Gordon Johncock, Dick Ferguson. Haven't seen him yet. There's uh, Brayton and Carter, 1985 front row setters. Ari Leindyke, who won the Rookie of the Year in 1985 and 1985 Pocono winner Rick Mears. So that's going to wrap it up for our Indy 500 video for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Not sure what we're going to do tomorrow, but we will find something. So enjoy your race day. Enjoy your holiday weekend. Uh, go have a cookout. Relax. Enjoy time with your family. So thanks for watching. My battery's getting low, so I'm going <laughs> to so is my voice. But we will see you tomorrow, and we'll open some more cards. Thanks for watching.